In the last tutorial, we completed our onboarding navigation. We can now move on to designing each onboarding page. Before we jump into the page content, let's go back to the design and look at what we will do next. We could jump in and start working on one of the views, but some patterns do appear. The capsule button and the rounded rectangle buttons appear on all three views, and they have some subtle differences that we can take into account. Instead of making this button for each screen, let's create two buttons and add some parameters to cover the different button types. Making these buttons dynamic makes them easier for reuse. Let's start with the capsule button first. We will need a few things to be passed in for the capsule button to accommodate the different variations. We will need a title. Both variations need a way to determine the currently selected state and we need a way to show or hide a check mark. Let's go back to Xcode, open the navigator, right click on the supporting views folder and select new file. Then select Swift UI view under user interface. Now let's name this file capsule list button and hit create. As we stated earlier, we're going to need a couple of variables to make this button dynamic. Above the body, let's add let title colon string, let type colon int, let index colon int, var has check mark colon bool equals true, let action colon parentheses dash greater than void. You might be wondering why has check mark is set to true and the rest don't have a default value. When we give a parameter a default value, it means that when we create a capsuleless button, we don't have to pass in a value unless we want to change the default value. By default, we are saying that the capsuleless button will always have a check mark unless we pass in a false value. Let's update preview with our newly created variables. Type title and hit return. Set the title to title goes here, set type and index to zero, and set action to opening and closing curly braces. Since we have two different styles of capsule buttons, inside of previews, let's set up each variation. Right click on the capsule list button and select embed in VStack. Then right click again and select embed in VStack again. Copy the capsule list button and paste it under the first one. Update the type to one and the index to two. Copy the first capsule list button and under the VStack, add an H stack and paste in the capsule list button. Update the button to have the has check mark parameter and set it to false. Then copy this button, paste it two more times and update the type to one and the index to two for the following two buttons. Let's add a padding modifier to the V stack and set it to dot bottom with 40 pixels. Inside the body, delete everything and add an H stack. Then inside the H stack, add a button and set its action to action parenthesis. Inside of the curly braces of the button, we need to add an if statement. We want to determine if a check mark should be shown or not. Let's add if has check mark opening curly braces return h stack. Then inside of the h stack, we're going to say if type equals equals index. Then inside of the first set of curly braces, we're going to say image parenthesis quotes check mark dash w h t. Now we're going to add an else statement and inside of the else statement, we'll say circle opening, closing parentheses dot fill opening parentheses color dot black dot opacity parentheses 0 0.30 dot frame parentheses with colon 28. After the if else statement, add a text view and set it to title. Let's add a frame to the text view with the max width set to dot infinity and the alignment set to dot leading. We are done with the first part of the has check mark if statement. Let's add an else statement. And inside of the else statement, let's add an h stack. 
inside of the H stack, let's add a text view and set it to title. Now add padding to the text view, set it to dot leading and give it 20 pixels. Let's add a frame to the text view with the max width set to dot infinity and the alignment set to dot leading. Next, let's style our button. Let's add some modifiers to the button view. We'll add padding and set it to dot horizontal. And for the value, we're gonna say has check mark question mark 10 colon zero. Let's add another padding modifier, set it to dot vertical, and then give it 10 pixels. Add a frame to the button with the max width set to dot infinity and the alignment set to dot leading. Now we want to add a foreground color and we'll set this to type equals equals index question mark color dot white colon color dot base black. We'll add a background and set it to type equals equals index question mark color dot base purple colon color dot base LT gray. And finally, let's add a clip shape and set it to capsule. We are done with the capsule list button. Let's look at the next button we need to create by looking at the design. We will need a few things when creating this button. We will need a title, an icon, a way to determine a type, an index, and an action. Now that we know what we need to do, let's go back to Xcode and get started. Open the project navigator and select the supporting views folder. Hit command N. Now select the Swift UI file under user interface. Now let's name this file rounded rec button and hit create. Let's start by adding the variables that we need for this button. Let title colon string, let icon colon string, let type colon int, let index colon int, let action colon parenthesis dash greater than void. First, command click on the rounded rec button and embed into an H stack. Now type title and hit return. For the title, add title here. And for the icon, add home dash icon. For both index and type, add zero. And for action, we'll just add an opening closing curly brace. Now let's copy and paste the rounded rec button we just updated and update the icon to outdoor icon. And let's update index to one. Inside of the body, we're gonna go ahead and delete the text view and we're gonna add a button. So we're gonna add button, opening parenthesis, action, colon, opening curly brace, space, action, parenthesis. At the end of this line, we're gonna add an opening curly brace and hit return. Now let's add a V stack. And then inside of the V stack, we're gonna add an H stack. Inside of the H stack, we're gonna add a spacer. Under the spacer, we're gonna say if type equals equals index, opening curly brace, hit return. Inside of the if statement, we're going to say image, parenthesis, check mark dash W H T. Now let's add the resizable modifier. And then let's add a frame modifier with the width set to 18 and the height set to 18. Let's add an else statement at the end of this if statement. And we're going to add circle parenthesis dot fill. We'll set the fill to color dot black dot opacity. We will set the opacity to 0 0.30. Now let's add a frame with a width and set it to 18. Next, let's add a padding modifier to the H stack. We're gonna set it to dot trailing and we're gonna give it a value of 10. Next, let's add a Y offset and set it to minus five. Let's add a couple of lines underneath the H stack and we're gonna add a V stack. Inside of the V stack, we're gonna add an image and set it to icon. Now let's add the dot rendering mode modifier to image 
and set it to dot template. When we use the dot rendering mode and set it to template, it gives us the ability to customize the color directly in Xcode. Underneath image, we're gonna add a text view and set it to title. Let's add a frame modifier to the text, set the max width to dot infinity, and the alignment to dot center. We'll go ahead and add a font modifier and set it to custom. And for our custom modifier, we'll set it to medium with the size of 14. Now let's add some modifiers to the overall appearance of the button. We're gonna add some vertical padding to the button and set it to 10. We're gonna give it a frame height and set that to 100. Next, let's add a foreground color and set it to type equals equals index question mark color dot white colon color dot base black. And then we'll add a background and we'll set that to type equals equals index question mark color dot base purple colon color dot base light gray. Finally, we'll add a clip shape inside of the clip shape. We'll set the shape to rounded rectangle and we'll set the corner radius to 15. And lastly, we'll add a bit of horizontal padding and set it to five. We have completed all of our custom buttons. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel.